Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at many to many relationships in Laravel and also implement our follow and unfollow functionality. So let's get started. Now, one thing about the previous episode, uh, someone mentioned that this delete method throws an exception if user image is null. So one way you could fix that is basically by adding a null operator and passing in an empty string if user image is null. And that should fix the issue, okay? So this is something we didn't encounter on the previous episode, but uh, you can add that to fix that issue. So now let's go ahead and talk about many-to-many -many relationships. So the first thing you have to do is whenever you have a many-to-many -many relationship is create a pivot table to store the relationship in your database. And usually when you're naming your pivot table, in Laravel, let's say, for example, you have two tables, posts and tags, uh, your pivot table name is going to be the singular version of your individual tables separated with an underline and ordered alphabetically. So this pivot table is going to be, for example, post tags, post tag. So it's going to be the singular version of the initial table name, or it's going to be your model name with an underline between, and then it's going to be alphabetical. So since P comes before T, it's going to be post tag. And this is the most commonly used naming convention in lot of communities. Most open source project, most projects use this naming convention. Now in our case, we have a relationship between user and another user. Now, obviously, if we were to use that naming convention, our pivot table would be user user. Doesn't really make sense. It's not really descriptive. You can't really tell this is about followers and following. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is going to be a relationship between a user and a follower, right? This makes a bit more sense. And then using that naming scheme, our pivot table name would be a follower user since F comes before you, right? Okay. So that's going to be our pivot table name. Now you are free to use any other name you like, but this is going to be what I'm going to use today. So I'm going to go ahead and create our migration first. So I'm going to say PHP artisan make migration, and then I'm going to name it create follower user table. And I'm going to separate it by underline. And I also want Laravel to create the boilerplate code for table creation. So I'm going to say dash dash create. And I believe I have must have make a, made a typo here. Yeah, should be migration. Nice. Now for pivot tables, you usually don't need a model, so I'm not going to create a model for it. We just need the table itself. Okay, nice. Now, usually most people don't define any primary keys on their pivot tables. It depends on your use case. For our use case, I'm not going to be defining it. We only need two foreign keys. So the first foreign key is going to be for our users, right? So I'm going to say foreign ID, user ID. And then as always, I'm going to say constraint and uh, cascade on delete. And then we need another foreign ID for our followers, right? which is going to be the user ID of whoever it's following. Now, we also need to tell uh, constraint that this follow ID is uh, for the user's table. So I'm going to pass in the table name. As a second argument, you can pass in the primary key used here. So by default, it's going to be ID. So I'm not going to pass that in. And that's all we have to do basically to define our migration. Now, you can also delete this timestamps if you like. I like I'm going to keep it in so we know when the relationship was created okay but you can delete that if you like so let's go ahead and actually uh, run our migration okay so i'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal and i'm going to say php artisan migrate okay now that we have run our migration uh, we can go ahead and actually define our relationship in our model okay so i'm going to open up our user model and similar to uh, what we did on for our ideas and comments relationship, the, this is going to be very similar for many to many relationships. Uh, you need to define two methods. Since we have a relationship between two users, both the relationship methods are, are going to be inside the user model. So I'm going to define two methods. One of them is going to be for uh, followings. So these are the people uh, we are following and then we're going to have another method for public function followers and this is going to be people following us right or the current user and i hope i didn't make a typo now to define a many to many relationship you can basically do the same thing we had say this but instead of has many 
we're going to say belongs to many. So belongs to many is for many to many relationships. And we're going to pass in the class that we have relationship with. So in our case, it's going to be a user class. The second argument is going to be your pivot table's name. Now, if you are using the naming convention I mentioned in the Laravel community, and both of your uh, models have both of basically both entities in the relationship have a separate model, you don't actually need to pass this next argument, right? Laravel will just automatically detect it. But since in our case, we don't have a follower table, we do need to tell Laravel basically the table's name, the pivot table's name. So it's going to be follower user. Now, the next two arguments, I don't know if you guys can see VS Code is suggesting to me. So the next one is going to be the foreign pivot key. And then we have the related pivot key. Now, so let me actually explain this. So whenever we are following people, so our uh, followings, the current user, basically the user we are defining, is going to be the follower ID. Okay, so this is going to be our ID or the current user that we are running this migration on. And then user, user ID is going to be the uh, followed person's ID, okay, or followed user's ID. So when you are defining these relationships, foreign pivot key is going to be our ID, okay, whatever our ID is. So in our case, it's going to be follower ID. So I'm going to pass in follower ID. And then the next one, obviously, is going to be the related key, which is going to be the other entities or other models uh, private key name, which is going to be user ID. Now, since we have timestamps in our uh, relationship, they created that and updated that, we also need to define that. So I'm going to say with timestamps. This is quite important. Otherwise, Laravel won't automatically set created that and updated that for us. Now, for followers, it's basically going to be the opposite of what we had for following. Okay. So we're going to have user ID here, and then we're going to have a following ID there. And that should basically uh, get the job done for us. And we should be able to easily access these relationships or create them as we go along. But let's go back to our application. We have this follow button. What we need to do is we need to create a route. And when we click on this, submit a form request to that route. So let's go ahead and actually create those routes for this. So I'm going to open up our route file and I'm going to define a post method for following. And for the route name, I'm going to basically try to make it a RESTful API. So I'm going to say users and then it's going to be the uh, user ID and then follow to follow that user. Now we could use the user controller for the follow and unfollow. It's up to you guys. I think I'm going to create a separate controller for this. I'm going to create a, like a follower controller or something like that. But you could also use a user controller. It's up to you. But I'm going to separate it into a, a separate controller since our user controller is getting quite big. So I'm going to leave that empty for now since we don't have the controller yet. And then I'm going to give it the auth me deliver. So I'll copy this from here. And for the name, I'm going to say uh, users.follow. And I'm going to copy the exact same thing for unfollow. And I'm going to also name it users.onfollow. So let's go ahead and create our controller. So I'm going to say php artisan make controller. And I'm going to say a follower controller. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter. And it probably is because I made a typo somewhere. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So whenever you have an error in your route files, these artisan comments won't work. So I'm going to uncomment them. Now we can comment comment them back in. And here I can basically now access our follower controller. Just like that. And yeah, it's okay. So now we have our controllers and our routes. And I'm going to go ahead and actually implement both of these guys, I'm going to say public function follow. And then uh, public function on follow. Again, guys, you could also define these in your user controllers. Uh, it's totally up to you how you define these. This isn't really a course on how to organize your code. We might have a separate course on that. For now, I'm just going to try to keep it simple as possible. So we have a separate controller and it's easy to follow on the video. Okay, guys. So let's take a look at our blade file. I'm going to go ahead and find this follow button. For now, I'm not. I'm going to leave the implementation empty. So let's find our user card. 
And by the way, we have two versions of it. We have a user card and user card edit card. I think when we are editing, we are seeing our own profile, so we don't actually need the follow button. So the only time we need to see the follow button is going to be inside a user card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this follow button with a form. And the action is going to be our route users dot follow. And I'm going to pass in the user we are trying to follow, right? So it's going to be user ID. And then I'm going to basically put the end tag after the button. And also I guess say, I guess type submit. And that should get the job done. Now, one more thing we need to do is we need to set the method. I'm going to say post. And we also need the CSRF token. Now, we also need an unfollow button. Okay, for now, we will first implement the following and then we will add the unfollow button here. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's test this out first, see if it's actually working or not. I'm going to click on this follow button and yes, it is now working. Now, it is telling us that follow does not exist. It might be because I didn't save this. I'm not sure. It still is saying follow does not exist on our follower controller. Interesting. Why is that? Oh yeah, it's follow with a single L. Huh, interesting. Okay. So now that we have fixed that typo, let's go back and let's try again. Now we see an empty string, which means it is actually working. Now, since we are basically passing in the ID of the user we want to follow, we can use route model binding. So I'm going to say user, user. So this is going to be the user we are trying to follow. And then our follower is going to be basically the logged in user, right? So we can add, use the auth middleware or the auth helper to get the current logged in user, okay? And I'm going to define them this way so you guys can exactly see who is the follower and who is the one being followed. Now to add a many-to-many -many relationship, all you have to do is take one of the models, get the relationship you have. So in our case, uh, I want to follow someone. So I'm going to say following, right? So we have a relationship named following. Let me find it. Followings. And then what we can do is to add a new record on our database, we can say attach. Attach with two T's and then pass in basically the ID or the model uh, you want to have add the relationship for. So in our case, we can pass in either user ID or the user model itself. So I'm going to go ahead and pass the user itself. And this will go ahead and basically create the relationship for us. Now VS Code is giving me some issues. It's totally okay. It's not be able to take this following method, but this should work. And then after we are done that, we can actually redirect the user back. Uh, to the profile of the user they have followed. So we can say redirect route a users dot show and then user ID. And we can also pass in a flash message followed success fully. Okay. And that's all we have to do, guys. So let's go ahead and test this out. Now I do have my database over here, guys. So I'm going to reload and we do have our uh, follower user table. Now, this might be very small for some of you guys. I apologize for that. Uh, table plus for some reason does not have zoom functionality. I don't know why. So I'm not able to actually zoom in here, but let's go ahead and let's try if this follow functionality works or not. I'm going to click follow and it says follow successfully. So let's see if this actually created a record or not. So user ID is the person we followed which in this case, I'm on user number one. So that is correct. And then follower ID is the person doing the following, which is the currently logged in user, which is user number two. And this indeed worked just fine. So that's good to know. Now that we have that, guys, we need to actually swap this follow button with an unfollow button when we have followed someone. So we need a way to actually figure out if you're following someone or not. And we can actually define a helper method on our model itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to say public function follows and then pass in a user model to see if basically we are following this user or not. And again, for this, we can actually use our 
relationships here. So I can say uh, dollar sign return dollar sign this dot followings, right? So get our followings relationship. And then we can do a quick check, see where user ID is equal to the user we want to check if you're following. And then basically Laravel provides an exists method. Exists. And using this, you can basically check if there are any records or not, okay? And now we can go ahead and I, I basically use this follows method anywhere we want in our blade file. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to do it over here. I'm going to say if the logged in user, basically, ought user follows the user we are viewing their profile. If you are following them, then show the unfollow button. If we are not following them else, show the follow button. So now I'm going to go ahead and create the unfollow button here. And let me format this so it looks nice. So this is going to be unfollow. And then our route is also going to be unfollow. Now let's see if this works or not. I'll do a reload as you can see it becomes unfollow. Let's make the button red. I'm going to make this PTN danger. And as you can see, it says unfollow. Now if you click on it, obviously nothing happens. We don't have the functionality. So for our unfollow functionality, I'm also going to add the user bound binding, so route model binding. And it's going to be exactly identical to our follow functionality, except instead of attach, we can say detach. And this will go ahead and basically remove the relationship if it exists. And then instead of follow successfully, we can say unfollow successfully. So let's go ahead and test this out and see if it works or not. Uh, First, on our database, we can see the relationship. I click on unfollow. I'll reload the page, and the relationship is gone. I'm going to follow again. Boom, it exists, and I can unfollow as well. So just like that, very easy to do many-to-many -many relationships in uh, Laravel. You don't really need to write that many SQL code or anything like that. Majority of the use cases, we can just basically do what we just done, attach and detach. Now, there are, there are some other methods you could use, such as sync, things like that. Uh, those are more niche use cases. So uh, if you guys have any questions regarding that, you can ask me in the comment section below, or I might make a separate video going super in-depth into many-to-many -many relationships. But this is the basics of it. Now, I believe we are done now. So let's go ahead on our first page. If we go view our own profile, obviously we cannot follow ourselves. If we view another person's profile, uh, we can follow them. Let's go back again, and yeah, it works now as well. So that is it, guys, for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you get notified of the latest episodes. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.